Hi, my name is Paweł Spechalski and today a new format on this channel. Looks like by accident I will be doing something what Joshua Bardwell was doing some time ago for the beta flight. I will be doing the black box analysis for the INF users. And today the first episode. A few days ago on the Facebook INF group a guy named Ryan, yes Ryan, uh, posted that he has problems with position hold on his multi-rotor while everything else works just perfectly. Acro great, angle great, horizon great, but position hold is uh, laggy, jumpy, wobbly, it, it doesn't look good. So um, yesterday in the evening he sent me a few of his black box logs and let's take a look and see what we might tell about his setup and what he should improve to have a better INF performance. Ryan's lock opened, let's see what we can learn from it. The first interesting place will be this here, this moment when Ryan raised his throttle. So step number one, let's display motors. And what we can learn about motors. Oh, this is interesting. Looks like one of the motors in Ryan's uh, multi-rotor is either not behaving correctly or it has somehow damaged propeller or something else fishy. Maybe it's only not calibrated because look what's happening. As soon as the throttle is pretty low, everything is fine. But as soon as he rises up to the sky, at this moment, motor number one, this is number one, yes, motor number one completely overflows. That means it's either not correctly calibrated or the propeller is giving less thrust or something else, something fishy is happening with that, with that motor. That also can mean that there is a problem with both balance on the roll or pitch axis plus one of the motors is slightly tilted so the yaw axis is not acting in the, um, in the constant state but this is, this is something completely else. So my advice Ryan, number one, please do motor calibration because this definitely does not look good. This is an indication of, uh, of a problems. Okay, think number one, uh, let's say discovered. Let's now take a look at gyros and see if we can see something bad in here. Um, no, no, gyros are looking pretty good. I don't see much problems. Let's wait for the spectrum graph to load. Oh yeah, it's here. So what do we have here? Um, it's fine, it's good. I don't see any problems uh, over here. So at least this is something that we should not uh, worry about. That probably explain why Ryan has no problems with acro performance because it just flies, gyroscopes are working perfectly, everything is good. Okay, mm, this is good. At the same spot, let's take a look at accelerometers. Oh, 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 okay. This doesn't look good. Accelerometers should not behave like this. Mm, this is not a valid accelerometer state. Look what's happening. As soon as, maybe not here, not here. Mm, okay, this is the... This, this range is the high throttle and it's very, very noisy. As soon as throttle goes down somewhere around in this place, the amount of noise on the accelerometer goes down considerably. And that's, that means there are some problems with motors or propellers. There are just too much noise fed into the gyro and it's just not working. No, not the gyro, the gyro is fine. Just too much noise, too much vibrations are fed into accelerometers and it's going crazy. Accelerometers are much more sensitive to vibrations than gyroscopes, so this is probably one of the reasons. This is something you have to work on, Ryan. If you do not have soft, mount, soft mounting of the FC, I strongly suggest you soft mount your FC, but please check what's happening uh, and why the level of vibration goes up as soon as as you throttle up because this is not something that accelerometer can work with and uh, and give a reasonable position estimations that are used during the position hold 
Yes, every time it's more or less the same. As soon as the throttle is pretty low, it's fine. A second later, let's add the throttle over here, RC command, save. As soon as throttle over visible over here is below the threshold, more or less here, located on this level, the vibrations are fine. But as soon as the throttle crosses the threshold, uh, over here, may, maybe, maybe somewhere in this place, this thing starts to happen. There is a very, very strong correlation between throttle and accelerometer noise, so please fix it. This is really a step two, right after calibration of your ESCs that you have to do. Great, so we know something. Now, now my favorite part. My favorite part about magnetometer, because like I said at least a few times, uh, most of the problems about position hold in INAV are caused by magnetometer. So, on one graph let's dif display magnetometer and on the second graph one more time RC command, but this time only throttle. And let's look for the correlation between the throttle and magnetometer readouts. Oh, you see, we have the first one. Throttle goes up, z-axis goes down, x-axis of magnetometer goes down, no y-axis, but x-axis also slightly goes down. If I would predict the correct values from magnetometer should look more or less like this, because you were probably moving somehow, but as soon as between this point and this point you raised a throttle, throttle just went up and much more current started to be fed into the motors and pulled from battery, much more current was drawn from the battery, the battery cables, ESCs, motors, started to create a very strong magnetic field that just made magnetometer compass go crazy. You, there is a very strong correlation between readings of magnetometer, you see, over here, and the throttle position. This means one more thing. Your compass, GPS module, accelerometer, is much too close to the any kind of electric wires you have in your quad. You have to mount your GPS unit and compass on it. Probably you have a compass on a GPS unit. As far from any kinds of electromagnetic sources as possible. 10 centimeters from any cable going from battery or to ESC is the absolute minimum. 10 centimeters, at least 10 centimeters. Uh, aim for 20 or maybe not 20, but as far away as possible. This, this, this situation here probably is one of the reasons you have a poor position hold together with a lot of noise uh, fed into accelerometer and some problems with your motors. Uh, let's scroll over here and one more time. You see, throttle goes up, compass readouts goes down. Throttle goes up, readouts go down. This is not how... Oh, this is, this is greatly, greatly visible over here. In this place, this place, this place. And every single moment there is a spike in a throttle, there is a change of the readouts from the compass. You have to fix it if you want to have position hold or return to home or any other GPS assisted flight mode. Let me check one more thing because there is a chance we can see the current sensor. Do we have a current sensor somewhere here? <laughs> Let's, let's gyro, RSSI, barrow, mark, amperage, last. Okay. 
So what we can say, um, every time the current exceeds more or less 16 amps, that's 4 amps per motor, your problem starts to appear. This is, no, you just have to fix it, dude, that's a must. Let's take a quick look at the position hold uh, stored in the in the black box, but unfortunately usually this is not something very useful because the position is um, stored in the centimeters and that means that it's rather hard to see what's really happening over here and on the different graph let's display nav position nav target nav target position okay and let's remove altitude because we don't need it um, but indeed looks like there is some no this is haha this is not in this okay let's take a look here uh, like I said, usually this doesn't give you much information because, well, um, okay, there is some oscillation starting, but no, nothing very, very visible, uh, very obvious visible over here. So, Ryan, please concentrate on the, on the motors, calibration, accelerometer, noise, and the magnetometer, because looks like... And those are the main sources of your problems. What else can we see? Oh, one more thing we can take a look at. Let's see here. Hmm, I don't... I don't know. Um, I never really was flying on, in any GPS assisted mode with such a high, uh, high rates and uh, high expo. I don't know. If you like it, if you, if it if it goes for you in acro, then great. But um, I really never tried such a high rates and such a settings. There is a small chance that this somehow would require a slightly different um, position hold tuning. But I'm not really 100% sure. I see your pits for the position hold are on the default, very good. Uh, not filter default, very good. Okay, accelerometer 15, you cannot really lo lower this or move this higher because you already have too much noise on your accelerometer. So besides that, everything, everything more or less looks good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think this is all we can we can really do around here. I hope this was helpful. If you want more of the videos like that, uh, I'm sorry, but you have to provide me some content, so I would need a black box from, from you. I'm not promising that I will analyze every single black box log you will send me, because I don't have that much time and I have other things to do. But from time to time, let's say once in a week, no, once in a week is too often, once in a few weeks, I will try to save some time to do a black box analysis for you. Does that sound fine for you? I hope so. If you like the video, thumbs up, please subscribe, and until the next time. Ciao!